Hello. Hello. How are you? Look, I'm good. How are you? I am good. I am I good. Not... I have some Evolution 18 product above me. I see. Can I see, see that? all that blue. Yeah. I, I could use one of those chills right about now. <laughs> I've got, I've got one for you right there. Oh my God. Yeah. We have, we have new puppies. So it's, uh, Oh, so you're, it's puppy time. It's oh yeah. Puppy but, training time. Oh my God. It's a lot of work. I forgot. How many, did you get a bunch of new puppies or just some, or well, um, you said puppies plural. So well, we left with three, one for myself, one for one of my coworkers and then one for my son. And they are the cutest. Very cute. Yeah. Well, what else yeah. I have, Bobby? Ah. Uh. Oh, is that de bloat? It is. <laughs> uh, it has fast become one of my favorites. It's good, right? It's so. It, everybody, please go and buy Beauty <sighs> Tea de bloat because it tastes incredible. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, taste and flavor in your products, um, but it's incredible and it's one of our favorites. Our um, let's start with Evolution 18 first yeah, because our sure. Evolution 18 shop. An article is live on the site today. Yay. Um, but let's sort of start with how you describe Evolution 18. Evolution 18 is a wellness brand. It is a um, supplemental wellness brand. And I, right. say, I say supplements because nothing will take the place of a, of a good diet. So that's right. It's, it supplements it. And, you know, it's, it's, Beauty from the inside out is basically how it is. It helps your skin, your hair, your nails, and then, you know, deal with a whole lot of other things that we all go through, like uh, being bloated, hence de bloat. Yes, it's a good one. Um, I said this to you on the podcast, which is live as we speak. Yeah. Um, that the line is so comprehensive that there are so many items. Is there anything missing that you plan to tackle? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm talk actually a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, one thing about me, I'm really curious. Like, I'm just I'm so curious. I always think things could be better. I always think that I could be better. You know, I'm a health fanatic. I'm a kind of a nutcase. But I just think there's <laughs> there's I mean, well, I will get it. Well, you could have my husband on one time if you want to know the real Bobby Brown. But... <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Now you're yeah. intriguing me. Now I want to go down that rabbit hole. Of yeah. Well, you know, I'm I, I'm kind of so who I am is on the surface. Like anyone that knows me, and I'm who I am. Like I don't know how to be any any other way. I never have been. And you know, if I'm dealing with digestion things, and you're my friend or you're my coworker, you hear about it. You'll know all yeah. about it. You will because I think we all go through different things. But I also will ask you because you know, people have different things at different times, you know, and I think a lot of people have digestion things. A lot of people have trouble, you know, getting weight off. A lot of people have trouble. No, not a lot. A few people have trouble putting weight on. Yeah, there is that. There's certainly that demographic as well, right? There is. And I always say one of my best girlfriends who I talk to about, you know, the things you talk to best girlfriends about, you know, she's definitely had more of a weight issue than I have. Right. But but mine drives me as crazy as hers drives her. So we've you know we've been friends together, saying okay you know let's go wait let's do Weight Watchers, let's right. do this let's right. you know get up every morning and let's wa keep walking and you know I've been doing that since I think I was 16 years old. Yeah yeah, and so what um what categories do you think you want to fill? Um, you know, more about digestion. I've been, yeah, ex I've been experimenting with, you know, apple cider vinegar, which I think, you know, deep bloat has, but what, you know, I do the shots of apple cider vinegar and water and it's just not pleasant. And there's I've so been many. I've doing that lately. It's really interesting that, you know, I discovered that the tea, which we just talked about, I'll show it again for people. It's uh -huh. this beautiful, delicious berry tea. It really tastes so good. And I love the little... it's one you put a lot of water in it. It really does work the best with more water because it's a way to get water in your body. Interesting, because I was going to say that I noticed that one little packet, and the packets are here. Yeah. Um, that's what a packet looks like. One packet is like, I could have probably put more water into this, you know? Yeah. Um, the concentration is, is pretty strong, so it's really good. But um, 
but yeah, no, I think that um, the devotee is something that, you know, maybe had been on the market, but not necessarily as pleasant as what you have going with this delicious tea. Um, you know, one of the products that we talk about in our article that I love is the hydration product. Um, do you want to just like stop and talk about that for a second? Because I, I, there's nothing like that on the market. You know, there's nothing that is strictly for skin hydration in that way. And a lot of us walk around, particularly during the winter time, with like flaky skin or dry patches. And I thought it was, you know, it's just terrific. I've been so into it. Do you want to talk yeah. a little bit about what's inside of that? Well, sure. I mean, it's 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 definitely beauty from the inside out. So if you're if it's going to hydrate your skin, it's going to hydrate your whole body. Yes. So it's not just for, you know, for your right. skin. That doesn't it doesn't work that way. I'm really like a holistic right. believer. And so, you know, the, w what it does is it will help your body absorb water. And and honestly, my whole philosophy is if it tastes good, you're going to drink it more. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't taste good, you're not going to drink it. So two little fizzies and a big thing of water. And it really does, you know, help hydrate your skin, hyaluronic acid, and just hold the water in your body. Right. And one of the things that you describe in your product um, is that it lubricates the joints. It's not just it, for skin, right? Right. It's well, collagen, yeah. collagen is the greatest thing for your joints. I, I do collagen powder, you know, as often as I can. I now make my smoothies with collagen powder, which mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. you know, is really helpful. Well, that's, that actually leads me to my next question. What do you use weekly personally? We talk a little bit about it on the podcast. You said that chill yeah. uh, is a favorite oh, yeah. product of yours. Oh yeah. That's, you know, it's, again, it's gummies. Like I am someone that likes a very easy delivery system. I'm not someone that, you know, will take a bag full of pills and expect to take it three times a day. That's not going to happen. I'll do it first thing in the morning. I'll take it at night, but during the day, you know, I'm, I'm a creative soul and us creative people are a little all over the place, you know, self, <laughs> self, di self diagnosed, you know, ADD person, but right. you right. know, I'm all over the place. So I like things that are quick and easy, our probiotic, which is one of my favorite things. It's like a pixie stick. If you remember the candy yeah, the pixie stick, it goes right on your tongue. It's, you know, two seconds. I look forward to it because it tastes like a lemon sweet tart. Again, I hate, to, it, it, and not that I hate to say it, it they taste so good. I, I'm getting to that question, but yeah. they're so good. They're yeah, so I, good. I often buy, you know, I buy a lot of products out there. I spend way too much money. You know, Amazon, one touch is just too easy for me. But I, I try things and if it doesn't taste good, even though the marketing and it's gonna fix this or do this, I just don't use it again. And it ends yeah. up in a drawer that I usually dump once or twice a year. <laughs> right, right. Um, and my next question to you is, and I, we didn't talk too much about this on the podcast. I don't think we touched on it at all, but is it difficult getting supplements made? Can you talk a little bit about that process? Well, nothing is easy, first yes. of all. You know, making right. makeup wasn't easy and, and making supplements is not easy either especially when you tell them exactly what you want and it finally you wait and wait it comes and then I look at the ingredient list and I say uh, -uh I'm not putting that in my body right. like I'm I you know I'm not saying everything's organic but everything is clean and real and I wanted people when they look at the side of a bottle to know what's in there I didn't That's want right. things that you know I didn't want anything that I wouldn't want to put in my body That's so, right yeah. right right um, getting back to the taste, it, uh, it, I think it tastes great. I had some with my mother. She thought it tastes great. Ah. I can't, you know, talk about the taste enough. But was that important to you? To you, know, you sort of said that it was. Yeah. But were some of these? I mean, how did you how did you nail some of these flavors so well? Because they well, they really do taste extraordinarily well. Yeah, well, you know, everything takes time and trial. And, you know, my my way of doing it is I decide what I like. And then I ask everyone in sight, <laughs> you know, from right. my kids so to my coworkers. Up. Yes, I mean, most companies would do market research, but I just ask people in my hood. I ask people around. And, you know, I wanted them clean. And I also, the, the biggest challenge with this whole line is I wanted an affordable price point. And... Part of That's, what I really love about the line, and we talk about it, not to cut you off on the podcast, was that it, I think it's wonderful that it's in, on, you know, it's in places like Kohl's and it's in Walmart. Walmart and it's bringing yeah. that day-to-day -day wellness to 
everyone. You know, it's on Amazon. We talked about the one click on Amazon. Right. Of course, it's on the website. Yeah, it's, it's not on Amazon yet. That's oh, it's coming. not. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's coming. Okay. Yeah, but it's on the website. I mean, our website is our number one door. And, yeah. um, you know, we do have products on on evolution18.com that are not in Walmart, more that's, formulaic, that's right. you know, a little bit more, more expensive. And that's our chocolate, uh, our energizing chocolate, which yeah. honestly is, was the first thing. Right yeah, here. it was the first thing I made. And I love that so much because it just, it tastes like a Mexican hot chocolate. It just, oh, I it, can't wait it, to try it. it's, it's milky, it it's delicious. I make a hot cocoa with it. I put a little bit of almond milk, um, like like a, a smidge of almond milk. I put hot water and I take one of those mini frothers, you know, so I don't have to like mess up a pot and I just oh, froth it and it gets all creamy and right. um, it's delicious. And it's got enough fiber and fat and protein so it literally takes your appetite away until your next meal. So you're not right. picking in between right. meals. Right. We're going to put your tip for how to mix that up onto the website. Okay. Um, which, which are the products that you get compliments on most? Which products in the line do people well, go crazy for? Our number one selling product um, is actually the vanilla. It's, it's, a, it's, it's called Relaxing Vanilla. I have that here too. Yeah, and it, that's also delicious. We're now thinking of new, new flavors we could bring it out in. But what's amazing about that product, it's collagen, it is hyaluronic acid, which is hydrates your skin, and it's got magnesium, which calms you down. So I have, and that's only 60 calories mixed with water, and I do that after dinner. It kind of shuts off my sweet tooth, and it tells me to kind of calm my brain because magnesium does calm your yeah, brain. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a bedtime it ritual. It is. It is. But I, I do it in the morning because um, sometimes in the morning, you know, if you're like this, if you're one of those people, it <laughs> does help you calm things down. <laughs> I love that. I love that tip too. Okay, let's get into some questions from fans and followers. Sure. We have a quest question from Lynn. What is behind the name Evolution 18 and how long... Did it take you to come up with the branding and the packaging? I love it. Well, I am a, you know, a visual being. I'm a, you know, the chief creative officer as well as the CEO. And, you know, it, we pretty much fast tracked it because we had an opportunity to get on QVC when we first launched. And then we had an opportunity to create a sub line for Walmart. And, you know, I just called my, my go-to people. I knew I wanted it the color of the Caribbean ocean oh, because interesting. Bahamas are my favorite calm place in the world. So I knew I wanted it that color and I wanted it to look kind of cool and interesting and a little bit modern, not a little bit, very modern, a little indie. And I wanted it, you know, to, to tell you exactly what's on it. So how, I mean, I don't think it took more than nine months for the whole, the whole, the whole project to launch. But well, very well thought out, obviously. Um, Cara, is the line okay? Another supplement question: Is the line okay to take with other supplements? As a certified health coach, what do you think is the right amount of supplements to take daily? And what well, is your first, stance? yeah, I mean, you got to talk to your doctor. Obviously. Yeah, you have to talk to your doctor. And we are all so different. We are made up of so many different things. I am not someone that could take a lot of different things. I start yes. to get jittery, or I my stomach bothers me. I notice something's a little bit off. And if I ever don't feel like, you know, if I feel a little bit off, I just hydrate myself with like more water to kind of flush things. But yes, I think that a probiotic is great. You know, the protein powders are great. You don't want to take everything in one day. And the, the D bloat as much as I love it, I would not take it, you know, three times a day. Good you know, to know. Once, you know, once a day, I have taken it twice, but it also has a little green tea in it. it so does. I don't... Yeah, I don't like, it makes, when I'm like lagging and, you know, in the early afternoon, I'll take it, but I won't take it after four o'clock. So are we talking like one glass, one tall glass or? Yeah, one, you know, one serving, one serving. Okay. Aura, is there anything extra, you're, another sort of wellness and supplement yeah. question, I think. Uh, is there anything extra you're doing or taking to protect, protect against COVID-19? Well, really, I'm not Knowing a doctor. What you know. All right. I am not a doctor. I have yes. a lot of, a lot of, you know, friends Disclaimer. that are doctors. I am yep. someone that believes in functional medicine 
And I don't know this to be fact, but I make sure that my immune system is strong. I am knock on wood. I rarely get colds when everyone else is sniffling in my office. And what do I do? I just, I eat a, a pretty full diet based on a lot of plants. I eat, I eat meat, I eat fish. I try not to eat too many carbs, um, you know, unless my oldest son is making um, sourdough bread. I can't, <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, for some reason, I stopped eating dessert. Best thing that ever happened to me. Changed you were a dessert my life. person, Bobby. I needed something, you know, right. when I was a kid, it was a frozen yogurt or, you right. know, I would, I would want something. And I just kind of lost the taste for it. If I want, if I do really want something, I do it with blueberries. And I feel, if I if you put do blueberries and sometimes I put really good cinnamon on top of the blueberries, you know, a touch, if I want to go extravagant, a little bit of plain yogurt on top of it. I kind of do the same thing. Yeah, and it's like, just a healthier alternative. Or nuts you. or something, add some nuts or coconut. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, we talk a little bit about this on the podcast from Gina. It, what in your experience over the years has been the most difficult about um, product development and that process? What's well, the most difficult? Well, you know, the difficult thing is, you know, wondering if it's going to work, you know. Right, right. <laughs> you know, wondering if it's going to make the timelines, wondering if we're going to have enough stock, you know. It's, it's, you've got it, whatever you create in life, you have to nurture, whether it's your children, whether it's products, you have to just take care of. So, you know, I'm a worrier by nature, by nature, hence calm really helps me. So I worry <laughs> about things. Are people going to like it? Is it going to, you know, like you know. everything that you could possibly worry about? You, yeah. You, you've got it. Yeah. 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 Um, from Celine, Bobby, what do you consider the, I like this, this is a makeup question for you. What do you consider the greatest hits of your makeup line? Well, thanks for I asking that. that. I thought I thought it was so interesting that you know here I am on this Q and A and everyone's asking me about wellness. So I'm like, wow, that's cool. No, 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 I, no. no. I shift it. I, I, oh, you I, do. I like, okay. I like to bunch our questions according yeah. to theme. So honestly, so. what am I? I mean, what I'm most proud of in general is that I created a company that really helped empower women to, to, with self esteem and feel good about themselves. And you know what? always mattered to me is that people found makeup that matched their skin, whatever color their skin was. So I'm incredibly proud of that. And, you know, I'm proud of the things that I made. And I have been gone from the company four years. I have not, you know, no affiliation. I have no people stop me on the street. They discontinued this, this, this. I'm like, <laughs> You're like I can't help you. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I can't help you. Are there any products that are like, favorites to you that, from over the years that you like your little baby? I mean, all of it is. Yeah. I mean, there's, so, there's so many, but for example, gel liner, I, I yeah. made this thing up. I made it up. I, I made the package up. I made the name, I made the formula and you know, I mean, I don't even know how many, uh, 10 years ago, every single brand has gel liner. It's so all the it was, gel liner now. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I made it up and I ne didn't even know what a gel was. The, the chemist told me it was gel based. I said, all right, then let's call it gel ink. That was basically how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Zoe, another makeup question, which brushes and tool work best with concealer and foundation? I need to perfect my zoom makeup game by yeah. evening out my skin tone. I love right. That. Well, first of all, these are my best tools. <laughs> and yeah. it's funny, I, I use my hands so much when I'm when I'm giving makeup lessons and people are going like this. I'm like, no, no, no. Use your hands. Feel I it. do that all the time, but I always think I'm being lazy. And I happen I'm not being lazy when I'm using my hands. Okay. Yeah. And I'm I happen to have it nearby and this is a oh, brush. Nice. This is a brush by someone named Ruby Hammer out of the UK. And what I love, well, I love her number one, but what I, okay. I love about this brush is there are three different heads on it. Bobby, so, I love them. Yeah, so here, I, I know, it's, isn't Look this the way that- beautiful they are. Yeah. So there's three heads. There is one that you could use for concealer, you could use for eyeshadow. There's one for eyebrows that's slanted, and there's one that you could use for lips, but who uses a brush for lips anymore? You could use it for eyeliner. And honestly, what I love most about it, it's always in my bag, and I don't have to be looking for it. And if she could do it with a blush brush, I would be happy. Mm, I love it. Great tips. Um, we should link those brushes in the show notes to the podcast somewhere. 
Diane, uh, I love the Just Bobby website. What's your personal favorite part of it? I love all of it. So it's what beautiful. people don't always know about me is while I was still at the brand, I became the editor in chief of Yahoo Beauty. We have they a question about that actually. Oh. Well, they came to me and asked if I would create a beauty magazine. So, you know, I had written nine books. I don't know how to type. And I was like, sure, that sounds fun. So I did it. And I just, I love telling people stories, but mostly I love content. I'm a visual addict. If it was up to me, I would, I would do, you know, shoots with my team and, and faces and do makeup. And it's what I like to do more than anything. To be on set. Do you miss To be on be set. Do you miss being on set right now? You know, I or miss have it. have done a little of shooting right now? I have not done, and I actually turned down a couple magazine, believe me, believe it or not, they were magazine calls, you know, I to bet. do someone's, I mean, we're, yeah. We're trying to shoot, so. I yeah, and, and I turned it down because I wasn't ready. It was probably about six weeks ago, and, you know, I have a couple things scheduled. I'm actually doing a friend's daughter's wedding. <laughs> Oh, that's so, so nice. Yeah, I got, so thrilled. Yeah, I got a nice, you know, mask and I'll, I will figure it out. What do you think you're good? You don't know, you, do you have a, an idea of what you would do for her? Oh, I know exactly. I know exactly what I would do for her. She's really pretty and really delicate and she doesn't need a lot, you know, of uh, some kind of an eyeliner, some kind of sparkle and shimmer and just a beautiful glow and just make her look like she's not wearing makeup. Oh, she must be thrilled. That sounds great. Rio, what is your advice for makeup artists trying to break into editorial during these times? I'm assuming he means COVID or. Yeah, well, it's never an easy thing to break. Never in, easy, right? No matter what. I'm not sure how I broke in all those years ago because. How do you, know, you think it, you broke in, actually? When you I don't know. That? I'm just, I guess I'm just really pushy, you know? No, I, I honestly, because. I wasn't even that good. I wasn't, when I started, I wasn't even that talented, but I cared so much. And I think I was such a team player. If someone needed water, I brought them water. If somebody, you know, asked me to change the makeup, I never gave anyone an attitude. I always showed the mirror to the models and said, what do you think? And if they didn't like it, they fixed it. And I watched them and I learned, you know, the big supermodels fix their makeup. That's you know, Jerry Hall was the first person that said, oh, thank you very much. It's beautiful. Can I have a mirror? And she redid her whole face. Wow. And I watched her not feeling bad, but just saying, wow, this is quite an education. Yes. You know, and she contoured because it was the 80s when I did this makeup and I learned a lot. And you yeah, know what? I wanted the finished product to be good. And this is yes. before we retouched. Right. So, it you know, I good. used I used to sit back on the set with the binoculars and look and, you know, see if the eyeshadow needed to Did somebody you were learning from tell you that that's what you had to do? Bobby no. Some binoculars and look. And I, no, I, I just picked up a pair of binoculars wow. one day somewhere and I'm like, oh my God, this would work on the set. Talk about resource. See, that's why you're Bobby Brown. Yeah. Because you... You're the kind of person that would grab a pair of binoculars and, and go look. And by the way, I always stood next to the assistant because the assistant was right up there and would say, yo, Bobby, yep. she's this. Yo, Bobby, she's sweating. Yo, Bobby. And, you know, you became friends with the assistants. And guess what? Then the assistants became photographers and then That's they always works. hired me. So yeah. it's how it works. Yes, you have to be talented, but you have to be nice. You have to arrive on time and you have to just ask a lot of questions. Ask a lot of questions. I, I've had this conversation we, uh, a lot with industry veterans, and you have to be willing to pitch in. Yes. You, you, in, a, in ways that you, you know, in all sorts of ways. Yeah. And just be there for the moment. When you're there for the moment, you're really, you know, you just want to, you want, you want to see success and you're willing to do whatever it takes to help out, right? Yeah. And people don't, you know, I'm sorry, attitude was never popular. Yeah. Or tolerated you know, at yeah. all, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bianca, uh, I like this question too. What's the best advice from somebody that you've gotten, famous or not, that has ever fam advice from best advice you've ever gotten from someone either famous or not famous? Best advice. Hmm. Um, I guess Leonard Lauder, early on in my career, said, "Never ask for permission, beg for forgiveness." Hmm. And what do you interpret that to mean? Um, do what you think is right. And, you know, if it's not right, say, oops. <laughs> That's it. Right. 
Yeah. Sheila, um, we have a question about the podcast. My friend got me hooked on your podcast. What made you decide to start a podcast? Well, I'm on my second podcast. The first podcast, I didn't really know what a podcast was. And I had just met um, Gary V. And he was starting a podcast division. And he asked if I wanted to do a podcast. And I said, yes. And that one was called. Ah, so it all yeah. started with Gary V. Yeah. And that one was called Long Story Short. And I literally would bring people on and I would do no homework, no research. I couldn't even pronounce their names half the time. And I would just ask a lot of questions as if it was just me and them sitting there, you know. And some of the interviews were better than others. And it was very random people. And then iHeart came to me and said, we have a major um, division and we'd love you to bring your, to do a podcast with us. And if it works well, we'd love you to have a channel and blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay. So I went over and I did my first uh, series, which is called Beyond the Beauty. I'm coming back in October for the second series and it's gonna be more beauty focused and not like as much wellness as I've done. So like technical beauty or all things beauty? All things beauty, talk to, That's you know, really yeah. Fun. Beauty founders, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, um, from my friend Anna, this was a question about um, Yahoo, what was it like being the editor in chief of Yahoo Beauty? What was it was that so like? cool. It was honestly, it was so cool. We launched the day Yahoo Beauty was launched, and we had worked on it for like you know three or four months. It was pretty quick. We, I got to go to Con. Yeah, I got to go to Con with Marissa Meyer and all these people, and it was kind of magical. It was like, wow, this is a. This is so bizarre. The media world, I didn't know that much about. Right, and, you're up on the other side of things. You know, and when we first launched, there was unlimited budgets. I could hire anyone I wanted. I what hired, year was that? Let's recall what year that uh, was. The year of unlimited budgets. Yeah, that? exactly. I know. It was, well, Yahoo had unlimited budgets in the beginning. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't like the old days of Vogue and no. you know, Condé Nast. But, but, you know, yeah. I can hire, you know, Henry Luttwilder. I can hire, you know... Whoever. Ruba as a creative director, I could hire, you know, Joan Juliet Buck, who was right. an editor in chief of, Vogue, of French Vogue. And right. yeah, but then towards the end, it was like, no, just replay that Kardashian thing that got so many likes. We talked um, about that on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yes. If you want to hear a little bit more about that, we get into that on the podcast. Jory, what's your pro? I like this too. Um, what's your pro tip for juggling many things at once? You're a pro at it. It's really not hard and it's not easy, if that makes any sense. So no, I want to get, you've been treating me, Bobby. What does that mean? It means that if you think about it, it's daunting. If you just get in it and fucking, excuse my language, do it, you just get it done. I try to do one thing at a time. I try not to think about what else is happening, which Don't is why I have to- not everything. Don't I just, You know what? Yeah, yeah. I mean- Look, I'm sitting there in my kitchen. My son came in one second before we started, dumped the, you know, all of the groceries and walked out. And I'm like, I'm about to go live. <laughs> so what am I going to do? Yell at him? I just went like this. Meow. I moved it all over. <laughs> right. And that's it. That's good. Yeah. That's your philosophy. Renee, when something you've worked on or tried to achieve has failed, do you pick, how do you pick yourself up and dust yourself off? Well, it's very normal and okay to feel bad, to either feel, you know, low, to feel, you know, blue. And I, I give myself permission to feel it. And I usually will either go for a walk and pull out my phone and call someone to talk about what I'm feeling. And then I let it go. Like I just, then I move on and I let it go. It's, yep. and, and, and know that when something doesn't work out, it's not necessarily just a failure. It's not a failure at all. It's just a, a notice to do something else or do it That's differently. Right. That's right. Yeah. Um, from Leah, who in business inspires you, Bobby? I mean, there's so, there's so many people, you know. There's Is there so anybody many... you're thinking about in particular lately that comes to mind? You know, I'm a big fan of Emily at Glossier. I think that we she, yeah, I see, I'm very consistent. She, yeah. um, you know, she really came and changed the way makeup industry was. You know, I love people that are disruptors. I mean, I've always been obsessed with Richard Branson. 
I, you know, just the way he like sat on his airplane to figure out what people's experience are, you know, how they could be the most comfortable, even if they're sitting in coach. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I love that kind of, you know, way to look at things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so there's a lot. Yeah. Dylan, what are you looking forward to working on this fall and into the next year, 2021? Well, we have some extensions with, um, with F18. So, you know, and hopefully we will be opening a very beautiful Amazon store, which I'm excited about. Yep. And, um, you know, we just hired some more content people. So my team is growing, which is really fun for me. That's so exciting. It is. It's um, really cool. And, um, and, you know, Just Bobby, we're growing Just Bobby. I have a couple sponsorships and partnerships, which I'm excited about. And, and the podcast I'm, I'm excited about. Uh, speaking of your team, I have to say your team is really on it, Bobby. Yay. You, all, the, all the members of your team that I've been in contact with have been A, lovely, and B, just super good at what they do. Oh, that's um, so good to know. And by the way, I often hire people that don't have experience. There you go. Yeah, and Don't they're tip. just yeah. I mean, they're hungry. they're young. They're 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 hungry. They're open, and they want to try things. And I try to train them, or but or have I them train themselves. Right, that's the best sort of policy in a way, because then you know there is some work to be done, but there's also um, teaching exactly what you need. There's no, no one's. They're not coming into the job with you know, preconceived notions of how they're supposed to do the job or how they did it before, right? Right, or say that's not going to work. Well, why is it not going to work? Have you thought about doing it that way? Right, right, there's that too. Um, how are you all working together these days? But that's just a question from me. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, guys? we're we're on Zoom. We're, you, you know, I've, I've started taking my picture off Zoom because I just, like, I need a break sometimes, you know. I just, just need to, like, lay down and answer the question. Yeah, right? just, you know, there's a big B. And, you know, I like seeing everyone. but And we hired a few new people over Zoom. I've gone into my office probably six times with small groups of people. I mean, I have a small group to begin with, but... I think the most people we had were four or five. We sat far away, opened all the doors and the windows. There you go. And, right. um, you know, we keep, we keep in touch. Good. Um, that makes sense. I want to, of course, as we sort of wrap up, talk about entrepreneurship, of course, wanted to get into this. But I'm going to repeat a quote from the podcast that we've used um, on social media that's doing very well. It's clearly resonating with people. Um, I think that it's because people um, are looking for hope right now. Um, so this is what you said on the podcast. I always say having a brand is like having a baby. You birth this baby and all of a sudden, you're, it's not like you're just sending the baby to college. You've got to feed the baby. You've got to learn who the baby is. You've got to change certain things. Same thing with the brand. You've got to figure it out. It's not a rush. Um, I, you know, you talked when you first talked about this on the podcast, I felt like you saying that was a big hug to me, mm. you know, that's yeah. kind of how I, that's how that landed with me. Can you expound on that? Comment? Sure. You know, I, I work with a lot of founders. I, I, you know, I, when I left the brand, I started going to, you know, all the different, you know, founder made and wall street journal, like all the different things. And you meet people and there's so many young founders of companies that you could see they're like this <gasps> i'm like calm down it's fine this is this is the good stuff being in the journey building it is really the good stuff everyone wants to hurry up and get a series abc and i don't right. know whatever whatever they're looking for and scale up and do this and it's like guys right. guys first of all enjoy the process like that's why that's who has successful companies are people that enjoy what they're doing right all right and as we close out this is a mantra of yours here that i heard uh-huh can everybody see wait this? it's backwards i can't see it i know i'm gonna read it to you bobby <laughs> okay. and i want you to talk about it all right and then i want a little extra from you i want a little there's a little something a little makeup tip that we want out of this this is the mantra stop obsessing about your flaws focus on what you do like wear blush move your body every day, be nice, help someone, highlight the positive, try a new food, 
put a cucumber in your water, put a little coconut oil in your hair, and master the smoky eye. <laughs> I love that. Well, the backstory of my mantra was I was going to do a line of scarves. It never, the deal never actually happened, but we were in the design process. And they said, we want to put your quotes on it. And I said, oh, I don't want those same old quotes I've been, that have been regurgitated. And they said, all right, we'll think about and come back with some new ones. And I said, give me a pen and a piece of paper. And I just wrote down the first Stream thing. Consciousness yeah. The best kind of writing you can Yeah. And I, wow. and, and I handed it to them. I and love it. I think I'm going to put this up on the wall in our office. Aw. I love all the components of it. But before we leave, uh -huh. um, how do you master the smoky eye? Can you give us the smoky eye short Short explanation? Sure. sure. A smoky eye really means that it is an eye that's been um, really blended. Now, most people can't like take a dark shadow and blend, but smoky, it's like it's dark and it just kind of like is a little bit messy. That's one way to do it. An easier way, I think I have, uh, I thought I had my eyeshadows. I don't. An easier way is look for four eyeshadows in different gradations. One light, so a light one, uh, a medium, a medium deep, and then the darkest. And you could use them to layer. Start with the light, then go to the next one, then add the darkest, you know, the, the, the third darkest, like in the corner of the eye, smudge it in. And the darkest you line with, and you can always add it over because every eye shape is different. I could not wear a traditional smoky eye. I'd look like I was punched in the face. Right, it doesn't work for everybody. No, right? and you have very strong eyebrows that you can't do that either. No. So, oh, okay. No, you can't no do one of those. No one has ever told me that. I well, like if it. you've got a big, giant, round eye and, yeah, and not just... too many brows, because brows are your strength. And I love your brows. Like brow Thank and you. liner for you is the best thing. You know, my eyes are very deep set, so I, I can't do a lot of dark or my eyes would recede into my head. Mm -hmm. But my so smoky eye, but, yeah, but my smoky modified. eye is like taking a brow color, like a brown color and just kind of smudging it and playing with it. And, and this is um, by Color Wow, because I'm in between touch ups and you put it, <laughs> You put it on your white hairs, and then you could use this. I use it on my eyebrows. I line with it, and I could use oh, it Oh, I'm in actually looking for a new brow powder, so maybe that'll Oh, be yeah, fun. it's really good. But, you know, make sure you don't go that dark because you have such good brows that it's you don't want, true. You don't it's want to be groucho. True. No, it's, it's so true that when I, do put, when I do put a darker, I love this idea of dark shadow, and then I put it on, and then all you can see is, like, groucho marks eyebrows. Right, so, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that, but you know, look at girls like you know the 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 late Margot Hemingway, with those oh, yeah. brows, you know. Yeah. So you'll see they never wear lots of dark eyeshadow. That's right. That's very true. Bobby Brown, thank you so much for your time. My Episode pleasure. Episode forty-seven of Story and Rain Talks is now live. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's on Google, and it's on Stitcher. Thanks so much, Bobby. Bye. Thank you. Good to see you again. You too.